Our next guest uh, is the president of the 12th president uh, of Finland, uh, just reelected uh, earlier this year for a second six year term. And uh, President Nianisto, uh, first of all, thank you for hosting me in your official residence uh, last year in Helsinki. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. A and before we talk about uh, the issue of health and climate, I I just uh, think I have to ask you to get it out of the way because it was global news uh, when uh, President Trump uh, said something about raking the forest. Uh, and actually, you were talking with him about the surveillance system Finland uses to monitor the forest. But it appears that you and President Trump remember the conversation a little bit differently. What do you remember telling President Trump? So good afternoon. Yes, <clears throat> actually we had a very good discussion. I started by asking about California and then I told him that uh, we here in North have had also uh, problems. Uh, there were quite big uh, forest fires in Sweden, in uh, Russia during the dry time in summer. And uh, what was my idea is was to enhance and sell him the idea that uh, during our Arctic chairmanship, we will take up also the uh, question how to prevent forest fires. Because uh, uh, we in Finland have uh, at least uh, some knowledge about uh, how to, to prevent that. And uh, well, like I said, uh, it was quite a good discussion. Okay, well, evidently uh, it got mistranslated uh, in the way he recounted it, but we'll we'll let that go. And I know there have been fires in the Arctic, and six of those big fires in Sweden this year were north of the Arctic Circle, so it's quite a problem. And and Finland is now chairing uh, the Arctic Council, uh, which includes the U.S. and Russia and all of the Scandinavian countries and uh, and Canada. And you are focused on one element known as uh, of the crisis called black carbon. A lot of people know it as soot. And it has a double impact because it settles on the ice and darkens the surface. And that absorbs more of the sun's energy. And so the ice melts uh, more quickly. Tell me about the Arctic Council, its work, and what you hope to achieve uh, as the chair of the Arctic Council. Yes. Arctic Council has been working now for 20 years. And maybe unlike in other international institutions, we haven't met any major problems. The cooperation has gone quite well. Uh, maybe it's due to the fact that uh, when you're talking about Arctic and cool environment, you yourself also remain cool. But, but nevertheless, uh, the cooperation has been very good and uh, we hope that to continue. Uh, that is why we have taken up also the issue of uh, arranging the, for the first time an uh, Arctic summit with heads of states. Uh, I think we have a lot to do and to, a lot to discuss how we can save Arctic because uh, if we lose the Arctic, we lose the globe. That's so clear. Yes, and uh, this year, um, uh, earlier in 2018, was the third year in a row that the North Pole started melting for a period during the middle of the cold polar winter night. No sunlight, but uh, the disruption of the uh, Northern Hemisphere jet stream brought very warm air uh, right over the North Pole. And again, this is the third year in a row. But another yeah. reason why the ice is melting so rapidly there is that it is being covered uh, by this dark uh, soot or black carbon. What steps are the Scandinavian nations uh, taking to reduce the emissions of black carbon? You got it quite right. Uh, surely the CO2 emissions and uh, warming up of the climate uh, that is the major reason why yes. uh, Arctic is melting. But um, 
there is another reason that is the black carbon we have taken up. Uh, like you said, it's uh, black carbon covering white snow. And after that meets sunshine, everybody understands that uh, melting <coughs> accelerates. And uh, fighting first against this uh, black carbon uh, is our idea. Uh, surely Paris agreements and Katowice, where I came yesterday, uh, they are dealing with the, the climate change uh, and uh, warming up of the globe. But uh, taking off the black carbon would have an immediate impact uh, on how to, to prevent uh, melting even further. So that is why it, it is, uh, I think, very natural to talk in Arctic Council. Where it comes from? Well, flaring seems to be one of the major reasons. You know that in gas fields they burn extra gas, and that produces a lot of, uh, of black carbon. But surely, specifically in Russia, they have old-fashioned uh, energy plants which should be renewed. That might be even a business for somebody. And, uh, well, like I said also, these uh, forest fires may produce a lot of uh, black carbon. So, in every means, we should get rid of that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, just as an aside, uh, in the Himalayas, uh, the so-called third pole, Black carbon is an issue there as well. So your leadership of the Arctic Council can help to produce some solutions that have true global significance. I understand you've invited President Putin and President Trump to attend your meeting. Uh, do you think they'll come? Uh, first of all, thank you for <clears throat> telling me when you visited here. I guess this is a very familiar place to you. Yes. Uh, by taking up that uh, the Arctic is not the only place where we suffer from black carbon. Uh, we try to keep that in mind too. Yes, we have invited, or let's say discussed, both in Washington and Moscow, whether the heads of states uh, in USA and Russia would uh, participate in a summit if we if we arrange one. And I have been actually slightly positively surprised that uh, the problem of black carbon, uh, it is clearly understood. And uh, we have got uh, at least uh, uh, so far uh, positive comments on possible attendance to to summit, but it's not sure yet. Well, there's an old saying in the I U.S. I repeat uh, once again that... Uh, Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, please. Uh, well, I was just going to say there's an old saying in the U.S., be careful what you pray for. But I yep. understand that it would be good for both of them uh, to <laughs> attend. <laughs> and uh, the flaring of gas, which produces a good portion of this black carbon, uh, doesn't make uh, any sense anyway because it... It has a market value. Of course, I think we ought to stop burning all fossil fuels, including gas, uh, but it should be recoverable. Yep. Uh, but speaking of uh, ending the burning of fossil fuels as quickly as possible, uh, I admire some of the uh, steps Finland is proposing now to speed up the transition away from fossil fuels. Could you describe for me some of the things uh, that Finland is proposing? Yes, maybe I go a bit back to possible meeting of these presidents. How I see it is that if we can get further in black carbon issue, uh, prevent black carbon, that would be a step forward for a whole environmental discussion. That is the basic idea. But uh, what <coughs> we are here in Finland doing, surely, there are a lot of excuses to use fossil. Uh, we have a cold winter time, we have long distances, uh, me means a lot of traffic. But nevertheless, we are very decisive on making Finland a, 
uh, carbon neutral country up to 2045. And how we do it, surely the renewables are there. And uh, unlike uh, many other countries in Europe, we still are building nuclear power. That would be a kind of temporary bridge to the future. That's how we see it. Yes, and of course, nuclear power is controversial, but I think that, uh, uh, and we don't have time for a full discussion, but in the United States, we have some nuclear power plants uh, that are proposed to be retired early. And there is a powerful argument to extend the lifetimes of those where the safety can be uh, very much assured in order to uh, reduce carbon emissions. I understand that. And uh, Jim Hansen, one of our greatest scientists in the world, has been very eloquent in pushing that point of view. But now I, uh, this uh, 24 Hours of Reality program, and again, it's such an honor for us to have you take part in it, we are focused on the connection between the climate crisis and health. A and I know you have paid some attention to this, and of course the air pollution that also results from burning fossil fuel is one of the implications, and heat stress. And uh, I understand that uh, this summer the temperatures were so hot in Finland that some people actually went to sleep at night in the grocery stores near the refrigeration units uh, in the grocery stores. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is a, a very new experience for the Finnish people. Oh, sure. <clears throat> it, uh, well, fortunately, the air in Finland uh, is, uh, according to international measures, uh, it's the cleanest in the world. So breathing here is, uh, is easy. But like you said, we had extraordinary warm summer, over 30 degrees uh, uh, heat uh, day after day, and we are not used to that. So some of us, well, went to sleep in grocery store where <laughs> the storekeeper was very polite to give uh, Give room, uh, and we have surely ice hockey rinks quite a lot. But should, <clears throat> it is a severe thing if people can't live like they are used to live because of the spoiling the climate. Yes, I, uh, last month I was invited to give uh, the updated version of my slideshow on climate in, in uh, Helsinki and did research on the health impacts there, and they are quite surprising uh, and, 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 and quite real. But in uh, the move to shift Finland away from fossil fuels, what is your biggest challenge in accomplishing that goal over time? Uh, I already mentioned that uh, we are warming our houses uh, wintertime. We have long distances. so. Uh, you know, in that sense, we are heavy users, and that means that we have to do a lot to, to get rid of fossil fuels. But uh, there are possibilities linked to, to uh, renewables, linked also to new kind of thinking that uh, maybe you don't have to use so much energy That's, that you're used to do. So saving is also one element here. Well, and Scandinavia has been a global leader uh, in innovating much higher levels of energy efficiency, including uh, zero carbon, zero CO2 homes that are so tightly constructed that, as you say, you don't need uh, uh, the heating in winter, even though it's a very cold climate, uh, particularly in the winter there. Uh, now, I believe you've said you became more aware of the climate crisis uh, almost 20 years ago. You had a wake-up call of sorts. Was that uh, the Stern report by Lord Nick Stern? Uh, did I read that correctly? There were actually two gentlemen uh, waking me up. Uh, first, uh, I read uh, the Stern report, and uh, during that time, I was uh, more like an economist. And you know that economist believes to another economist. Yeah. Well, 
sometimes they disagree, but nevertheless. <laughs> and uh, the other gentleman, they call him Alcor. <laughs> I got uh, familiar with your thinking and inconvenient truth. That was a good wake-up call. Thank well, you for that. Well, you're very kind. Thank you so much. And before we go, uh, this is not related to climate, but a lot of people outside of Finland don't realize you were actually a survivor of the one of one of the big tsunamis when you were visiting with your son in Southeast Asia, and you had to climb a utility pole to escape alive. What was that like? Well, I remember thinking while hanging there that the impossible has happened. There are seven meters wa water behind us. And when impossible has happened, you ask yourself, where's the limit or is there any limit? And this uh, is in connection to climate change. If we let impossible happen, there is no limits. What is the follow up? That's a very eloquent statement on which to end this interview. We are facing what some people thought was impossible, a global emergency that is an existential threat to the survival of our human civilization. So now, as you did during that tsunami, not climate related, yes. uh, you had to immediately think of doing something you would not have believed possible in order to survive. So Mr. President, uh, congratulations on your leadership. Yes. I really admire what you're doing and the leadership you're providing. And thank you for being a part of this 24 Hours of Reality program. Thank you so very much, and uh, well, you're welcome to <laughs> my residence whenever you visit Finland. Thank you so very much. Thank you, sir.